I don't believe this. He's gone loopy. He's stuck in the tumble dryer. Oh, here we go again. He's lost the plot again. Wash day tomorrow. Nothing clean, right? <laughs> Welcome to episode 14. Okay, first job with removing this low raised panel so we can introduce our repair piece is to ID the spot welds. These are difficult to spot, spot, spot. Your viewfinder probably sees them better, so I'm looking through the LCD screen of the camera. It does help actually. I think I've got four there, some along that lip edge, which is normal, and then obviously the obligatory ones on that seam edge. We're going to take a slice out of this. I'm guessing on those. Four there, so we need to start loosening everything up, getting those welds drilled, and then making a cut line along just below the hinge holes to remove that damaged piece. And it's going to go slightly higher up towards the right, where we'll have a join trying to keep Bramble's metal. This is all salvageable at the top, so it's a precise cut line. We need to get this right, and we've got the other piece to put in. So I'm going to make some drills and cuts there now, and you'll see. Uh, jump ahead to this being half prized off I reckon let's see how I get on progress is good progress is good more welds to go in more welds to clean up of course the lack of sill start addressing that situation shortly by splicing in our new metal down this end so we can start lining the sill up I think it'll look good if we start sizing up that sill before we take back any of those grinds um, report to base, power file bearing fail, the end bearing which takes a lot of stick on the power file croc sander has blown, that's what you get for cheap tools, if I could find a really tough going mains operated belt file sander, power file, needle file, croc sander I would get one, really could do one I knew that McAllister wouldn't just cut, make the grade, it just didn't make the grade. Anyway, look what we're going to do. You want to do this? Let's do this. Here's a tip if you want to make that little curvy repair section, hold on, that's just at the bottom of that A pillar. You need a piece of this bar, I think it's about an inch round. Then the vice jaws, open them just a bit bigger than the bar, then with a decent lump hammer, smack, smack that bar down into the vice jaws like that. That gives you, that gives you curved metal, look at that. Then you can just get a nice defined edge on it if you want. Look at that. Wow. So see, just if you haven't got that repair bottom piece, they often go here. Look. Whoa. Oh yeah. 
All right, now the profile might need flattening out a little bit just to match that tube shape, but we're not far off. Oh yeah, so we put that in, we want to get that cut just to the right shape, so a little tip to make curves in steel, vice jaws, tubular bar, lump hammer, smack, make sure you get the width just right and you'll be curving your metal for no money. What do you reckon? So we'll shape that up and see if we can get that to fit. Here's your friend again, the edge of the RSJ. I'm sure it was Mikey, the metal, that uh, tipped me on that one. What a great tip. That was Mad Mike's tip was the RSJ. Wow. It does do the hell of a lot of jobs. So I can pass that tip on right down the line, share and share alike. So there you go, we'll get in there, now we just need to trim it. Great. In my mind and in my car, we can't rewind, we've gone too far. <laughs> we've gone too far, it's all going good. A little bit more metal at the back now, just to break away. That's the remainder of the inner sill. And then the actual sill, in fact the remainder of the actual sill left, so a triple, a triple area, just cleaning that up coming off nice and then our piece worked out our bottom repair piece just wants the welds dressing up now so that's blended in good we've gone in there so we repaired the bottom of the egg panel with that section of metal that we made we just need to get the power file in and clean the welds up then we're done and now it's time to start shaping the piece of metal for the bottom of the egg panel clean up these the remains of the spot welds where the hole saw leaves the little nib then get the right cut to blend that panel in you may wonder why I didn't cut straight across well I wanted to keep the inner hinge support bracket dangling on the remains of the apron so we keep the alignment and that metal was good and we're trying to save metal so we're almost ready to start mocking up the inner sill there'll be some remains of the inner sill out for just bang the head. remains of the inner sill on here to remove pretty straightforward spot weld operation get that off then we can offer the inner sill up and start just getting an idea of how it's going to look so progress going well on the a panel repair next job for me just get the rest of them bits of scrappy bits of metal off then start offering up the a panel section we'll show you that in a sec okay a rough cut just slightly oversized at first but initially looking very nice up oh, there we go okay and then we're just you can see that uh, little bit of metal sticking over the edge that's because we're just slightly oversized we're going to file that in to fit exactly but before we put that on okay clean this up this wants uh, wire wheeling and then rust proofing then we're going to get rust proof at the back you can see how high the plate goes up so just to get that so there's no more cavity rust we're going to inject that at the back and let it dribble out till it's coming out of there then clean it back just so that's rust treated that bottom pillar uh, support bracket going over here then for the inside remains of the sill you'll see how it fits to the B pillar very important that you mark a yellow line before you even start pulling this off that you know where you're putting your other panel on so drill out the spot welds there that will release that the remains of the inner sill is split the B pillar goes between the two sections so make sure you get that right there's the remains of the old uh, sill the outer sill fits behind the B pillar and then the inner sill sandwiches it on the other side we're ready to nearly take that out that's that one gone I'm just going to leave us the attachment at the wheel tub which we're now going to cut that it's attached the end of the sill attached to the wheel tub uh, as does the inner sill attached to the tub we've completely removed the, any fixing points for the inner sill but we haven't removed the final welds that hold it to the bottom of the rear wheel of the wheel tub so rather than do that I'm just going to slice that piece off for now then because that's all out of the way we're going to put the inner sill clean the remains of the outer sill off the wheel tub back and then offer the both parts inner and outer sill the reason I'm going to do that is to make sure that when we fit this 
So bearing in mind it's a, a copy part, so we want to make sure that it lands on the sill. You don't want to fix this, and when you come to offer your sill up, the sill runs parallel, that you've got gaps or it's too tight a fit on this bottom of the ski jump. So they need to work in unison. If you were leaving this on, then it wouldn't matter, of course, because the reference point remains. But because now that reference point's lost, we need to make sure that we're happy with the sill lands on the yellow lines and everything's in place and that it's nicely tight up to this which hasn't moved vertically it may have moved laterally not moved vertically and indeed we've got our measurements for that distance anyway so it's time now to familiarize familiarize ourselves with the measurements and the alignment of this area because we want to get this nice and right I'm confident about it. I'll introduce you to the sills in a minute, which we've got in stock, genuine Ford ones. So we're going to cut this away, slowly pan you around, cut that out, and then clean up the area so the sill fits in nice. Right, first fix, inner and outer sills just roughly clamped up so we can get an idea how this fits. And it looks like we are here and here on this little lip for the sill so we know that uh, that line how we have it now is good it wants pulling in there but that's because we've not done that final cut there so we're going to get that that line will get that with a nice weld <coughs> down this side just to trim a bit more till that starts to fit snugly in and then we are ready here the inner sill fits with a repair piece we made once pulling out a touch, that tab goes over the side. That's just the way it is. You always have a little bit of a, a clearance under there. They're never snugly in. Um, the jacking point lines up with the jacking point there perfectly. So that's correct. So we can indeed check the jacking point. Sorry, I hit the camera then. Oh, no, it's the magma that's again hitting the bar. The jacking point bar goes in there. There you are. You're jacking up. Jack it up, boy. I'll go jack up. Damn bag. Clamped. Clamped. Following the floor. Little bit of a recess there. That edge might be a bit dented. I think it pulls in. Yeah, it does. It seems sealed there anyway. So there's a bit of deviation on that floor pan, but to be fair to them, it's pretty good. Look, if you follow, if you follow that line just bringing you in so everything starts to become everything starts to make sense and become reassembled so we land on the B pillar and we land on the A pillar and that's how you get it see what's important with the sill is the door gap itself because if you get the, the sill wrong the relative position here goes and it's very hard to get the door gap right because you've got the wing You've got the sill, you've got the B pillar. So this area is critical to get right. The sill itself, you've got the opportunity to get it right below. I must say there isn't a lot of room for it really to go, especially on the B pillar there. You can't push it up anymore. So really you are virtually fixed in stone. However, there's always that little element of adjustment which can get you out of some bother with door gaps. That's really what it's all about with this. We've got to get it right. There's an argument to say fit the door. We could do that. Got the door hinges, we could fit the door. And just see how it looks on the bottom of the sill to the wing here. Because this is where you'd start your first gapping anyway, because this is fixed. So although I must admit this wing's coming off but you've got to start somewhere and you want to get that gap and that door to sill gap correct and then the wing at the front's got a bit of forgiveness in it it's a close one it's a bit of a hit and miss I mean without fitting the door anyway with fitting the door then you bang on I don't really know where else the sill can move to it does really guide itself and we have fitted it exactly where the old one came off so 
it's one of those, uh, you know, we've got those lines there, I think it lands on those lines, and then guides itself really. So I'm going to do a little bit more double checking. I mean you could, now there's a curve on that, I was going to say you could go from the top of the roof to that, or we could copy the measurements off that side across to this side and just see if we're in the right ballpark. I'll do that, I'll just see what the measurements were. We have got some that we've written down as well, we can check them. We've got one here, an 88 lip to lip guide, so we can go and just see if we're where we where we left off when we took everything off. Okay, I'll go and do some measurements now, a lot of measuring, a lot of double checking before we finally fix this. Although I've, I've got the feeling it's got nowhere else to go and really the bolt holes guide it, so it's pretty much set in stone. Okay, I'm hoping all these measurements are right. What we'll do when we are fixing the sill, we shall have the door on. The inner sill's not as critical, but if to get if we find this little bit of gap in needed, don't forget that it's fixed at the bottom of this A pillar inner. The sill joins it, and there's actually a weld inside. This needs a plate, by the way. So that gives us how high up it goes. So it's got to go up and touch that. But you can give it a little bit of twist when you fix it on the final run down. So you could find that you can actually just a bit of torsion in the sill would make a little difference on the gap. So we could look at that once the inner sill's on. And once we're coming to do the, the final fixings for the sill, we'll have the door on here and we'll just we might have to twist and move it a little bit to get an all round compromise for door gaps so it's something to bear in mind you don't want to be fixing the bottom of the sill to the floor pan just until you're confident that the clearance is right on your gaps of your doors because it gives you that last opportunity to just slightly twist it if you had to if you just had to bring it in perfect so it's something to bear in mind but the inner sill can be fixed and the A pillar bottom piece, that repair that we're slicing in, we pretty much know where it goes. So it's time to clean and prep this area and get it all as it should be. So we want that right, painted and uh, weld through primer on it. Little repair patch where it's eaten through the front face. Once that's on we can then get a weld through and attach what we need to do with that. We need to pre-drill that as well so the plug holes are there. I'm not going to get a spot welder onto that I don't think so it's all plugged on. So we need to pre-drill the plug holes for it. Once that's on we can attach the inner sill and the inner sill can be spot welded to the floor, lower floor pan. Indeed it only really attaches to the a run along the floor and not many welds, there's only about five onto the B pillar. There's only one, would you believe, on the wheel tub at the back, which we aren't attaching because the tub's going to be coming out, so we'll leave that last one. So really, inner sill's only attaching on the B pillar. We can't yet attach it to the cross pan, the cross member on the floor pan, so it'll just be attached at the A and B pillars and at the floor edge itself. And some fixings up here where we've done that. So that's where we're up to. Sill can come back off now and we can get on with the prep area continuing on. So that's took a couple of hours of us messing about here just so we can check out the lay of the land. Cleaned and ready for the weld through. We've got to do the whole thing in weld through because the heat is going to be generated. There's no point um, doing much more. The weld through is zinc based and zinc rich. It's rust proofing as well so We'll give it a generous coat this, okay, because there's going to be a lot of heat from them welds along the side. So, weld through primer on this next to get it ready for the welding job. And then we'll stamp out, we mustn't forget as well, don't forget this at home if you're doing this, your captive nut for the wing lower fix in there needs to be replaced. They don't come on these pressings. And there's a side wing fixing hole that needs drilling. You'll see that it lines up with that hole, that's for the screw. Uh, let me show you what I mean, this is quite important, let me see if we can find it, here's one just coming up in my hands, 
you'll see there spot welded into place is the wing fixing recess and that lines up with that hole like this no it doesn't yeah it does no it doesn't yeah it does I don't know which way round they am but it should I don't know what, where the hell this piece of metal where's that piece of metal from where's that from and right what's going on cut more metal out than that there's your compromise this year where are they where are they yeah Ha <laughs> ha it's for the sale. Yeah, that hole does line up with that hole. Okay, Matt, no. The end of that, so. Now we go and get ready with a weld through. It's wing on to make sure we get the hole for the captive nut for the wing bolt. Lower wing bolt, captive nut, not included on these copy panels. So I just mark, line the other wing bolts up. So the holes all lined up. That's where the wing bolts to the A panel. You don't get the captives. So we just make sure we get the spacing. So we get the marker pen now. Mark the hole, drill out, and fit the captive nut. We're just going to spot weld the little captive nut into there. Welder is on. Welder is on. Welder is on. Spot welders ready. We're going to get a combination of spot welds and uh, MIG welds into this A panel as it's just waiting for the last bit of well through to dry, it's quick drying over 10 minutes we should be ready to rock okay get in Hold on, two hands for this one. I'm just going to die grind out these holes. Now we're really finished on this repair. I'm going to show you how we've got on. Right, now that that compressor's quietened down, it is a silent compressor, but it's still background noise for you. I'll just show you the compressor, by the way. I'm going to do a bit of a little break now. Um, just take yourself back in your seat and uh, sip on your tea or your root beer. That's a Fiat 59 dB decibel, a super silent air compressor. It's only good for light use, it's not a big capacity tank, but it's great for a little spraying. You can use a die grind on it, but it uh, does run out of power eventually on the die grinder. But I'm going to get a slightly larger tank one. But this is for just inflating tyres. It's kind of like a little workshop compressor. It's not good for heavy tool use. DA Sanders struggle with it. Um, but it is a nice one. It does run my DA, but not very well. It runs a small, it'll run the mini DA, won't run the big DA, so. But it's great for just small air power tool work, small uh, guns, spray guns, no problem with painting with it. But it is just a nice silent running unit, FIAC one. So that was the uh, compressor that you sometimes hear kicking in. And now a little story about our power file. Let me tell you, let's have a little five minutes off don't even do you know what I don't even know what episode we're in I don't know if you've re noticed recently I'm starting to lose track of the episode now that's simply because it's uh, sometimes you forget how much you've filmed anyway I like to intro and outro the episodes and I'll always add what it is at the beginning of the film 
let's talk about our power file okay now then I've looked around for power files there's some B&Q ones there's some silver line ones have a look on eBay silver line ones not got enough wattage you need I think at least 400 watts I've tried the lower wattage ones and they're good for probably woodwork and, and materials aren't as strong as metal but for metal you just need that little bit more power and speed and that's where this one comes in now this I've already blown two of these up one got finished off on Ruby and one's already been finished off on Bramble but that was down to I reckon the way I was using it and the belts I was using I've got some new belts I'll talk about the belts in a sec before I do the power file itself 43 quid but now reduced to 33 quid they're clearing them out I wonder why the only thing that fails on them is the bearing at the end that just can't cope with heavy use and that bearing breaks down that's what happened to my last one the bearing disintegrated then seized up so I take it back to the shop and got a replacement however when I went to, to the shop they gladly replaced it but then they had them all reduced so I bought another as a backup unit it's over there in the box just in the corner so I've got one in stock I do like them I think actually in terms of usability there's nothing wrong with it I know that's a cheap brand but it, the actual machine if you don't if you look you've got to be really careful with them I just don't give them any stick and let that wheel cool down between jobs it's when you're completely hammering it on a long run that's when they, they, they start to fail for light to medium use this will get you through if you were a tradesman and restoring cars every day no it wouldn't but if you're doing what I'm doing this could get you through um, just keep your eye on that bearing at the end I don't think you can add any lubricant it looks sealed um, I would only ever use 3 and one or even a, um, some kind of uh, bearing lubricant not WD because that uh, as Ricky points out will dissolve the grease that might be packed in there so got to be careful but that's not bad the thing that made the difference these great belts I've got off eBay these just really are blitz in the welds that and the flat wheel that Jerry supplied we've just got the welds cracked now these don't break I was having a lot of problems with the screw fix belts these are the four five seven mil sixty grit belts from screw fix cheap but only the same price as these off eBay now I had to go on eBay because I couldn't find anywhere that sold these these are German made straight away that gives me a little bit of confidence a lot of the times Germany made stuffs let's put it this way better than, than Chinese stuff in terms of uh, I'm not saying that against either country I'm just saying the German engineering's renowned to be good and sometimes uh, the uh, the China stuff's renowned to be bad all down to price although I've been said about price these aren't much different in price um, do you know what I'd like to tell you how much I pay I can't really, if you have a look on eBay at 457 mil sanding belt 60 grits you'll see these listed these are Kling, Kling Spore K-L-I-N-G Kling Spore and they are great I've just done a real heavy session I'm still on the first belt and there's still plenty left and I've done all this let's get back up to here now I've, I've cleaned all this back this is the repair that we did so we've welded it up and we've used the belt sander to get in everywhere we needed to do I could not do that job without this tool it's probably the most important power tool that I've got hand power tool that I've got it's as important as the drill it's as important as the angle grinder I'd say angle grinder is number one this is coming a close second or third in terms of welding tools I just cannot survive without it you can get an air one and I have got an air one but they're noisy and the compressor's running all the time this is reasonably quiet so you can you can go under the radar with your neighbours and um, your power file air powered one I find that uh, the belts are expensive and they're not as, ha as, not as handy moving the uh, the rubber hose like this I don't think it's as easy to move around as this now I know air tools can get more torque and the nature of the design they're more torquey and probably for a professional point of view let's just have a look at it they probably are the deal go into the air tool storage box however this one 
standard power. This actually broke as well. That came out. Something snapped off it. And that was used on Swampy. Probably alright, but noisy. Nothing's beat this. I know I've had the bearing problem, but when it's actually running and it's going good, you can't live without it. It just with them blue belts on there it's just made mincemeat of some really close work some really tight work up in here that you'd really struggle to get angle grinders discs in you just there's, there are other tools that will get in here like this and make that nice but nothing as easy as this um power file because i can get in there go against there and i don't damage this side then i can swap and go there and i don't damage that side I can just control it nicely, it's met, enabled me to shape some of the weld nugget down there on that nice repair that we did. Uh, it's enabled me to get in all the places that I wanted and create this finished product with the weld so that all we need to do now is very lightly infill with the metal filler, a little bit of pitting which we can get rid of and Whilst the weld line's there pretty good, you can just still see some of the craters. But um, the welding's going better. That's a great repair. And look how nicely that inner sill fits and slots over the tab to be bended and welded on when we're ready. That closing up. The gap here, that's normal, like I said. I dented it with the pliers. I'll straighten that up. A little bit of um, skimming just under there. Just to neaten that up. Like a finger full of aluminium filler in like that close up any pinholes we might have missed again a little finger a little bit of weld just left to go there and finish that off but we're all in and i've just you saw the die grinder just to get that hole finished there and that one because that comes this repair piece doesn't have the holes pre-drilled spot welds went on here as they should for the factory captive nuts there for your wings captive nut underneath here for the bottom of your wing fixing and we're good to go on that very pleased with that repair so I'm sure you'll agree I'll do me step back again for you. I think you'll be happy at home that we've done a good job there. And we've, we've done it nice. I really am pleased. I didn't want to replace that whole panel when there's nothing wrong with the metal here. I'm not trying to get it looking exactly like it rolled out of the factory, but it's going to look really neat and tidy. And it's close. It's, I like it. I really like what I've done with that. I wouldn't, if you asked me, was there any improvements you could make on this particular area that you've just done, I'd say no. I'm that completely. If I was lying in bed thinking of that job there, I'd think, yeah, nice. And when I'm driving the car, which we will be soon, I'll be driving on the M6, the M25, the M1, the, uh, the road up to Scotland. The autobahn, because I will be on the autobahn in this car cruising, I'll be thinking, nah, that's nice, really nice. And let's talk about why I'm doing the car as well while I'm on. Again, I said we have a, these little chats together, you YouTubers then. I feel like I know all of you out there. So if you can imagine, I'm talking to you direct. You're just me and you in YouTube land. Why are we doing this? And why, why, you know, why, where, where do we, where do we set our level of quality? We set it where I'm happy. We set it where it's tough and, a, and not a botched job, neat, and ain't going to go anywhere. I mean, okay, you could say we can improve the welding skills, but if that weld does not rip apart and I can't smash it apart with a hammer, then it's holding metal together. Yes, the nuggets stick up, you've got a bit more sanding to do, but... As long as that weld penetrates, and I've been checking my penetration on the welds, and I can't see where it's not. And maybe in the early days, perhaps, I don't know, but I don't think so. I can definitely learn that skill. But think about a compromise. I mean, I'm not a welder. I'm not time served. Um, so you are learning as you go along. I know we keep saying that we're learning as we go along, but we're ticking our own box to what we find happy, what we find is actually achievable as well in a time scale. Because if you really built a car that's rolled out of the factory, you might want to take 10 years doing it, 5 years, I don't know. And that might satisfy you, but for me, time, you know, it ticks away. And I'm still young, and I want to enjoy these while I'm still reasonably young. And I've got other cars in the pipeline after this one. I don't want to rush it, but I want to move on. I want to, uh, um, you know, it, 
I've got you lot looking and watching and, and I want you to see progress. I don't want these big gaps between the films. I want to keep it moving. At the same time, deliver something which, which you at home think is a quality job as well. For, for the home restorer, I'm not talking about professional. We are not a professional setup. So they're the things. That's why I'll, I won't move forward until I think, right, that's good. So now I'm moving forward because that is a good job. And I'm really made up with it. So what we're going to do, we've had a little chat. We're going to move across. And now we had plug welds on here, but we've got to finish off with a spot weld finish. So the welder's down there, and we're just going to put in between the plugs the spots so that you get that dimple feel. Because this is a reasonable visible area, and although it's like Gravitex on it, you probably lose these in the end, but it'd be nice for them to be there. And the way that the welder's set at the moment is set for the large size uh, dimples, which these are. So we go in between the plugs, right? Some of them plugs, look, that one's made it, that one's, I mean, they've all made it, but some of them don't complete the full circle so I'll have to watch that when I'm swirling around if not quite hit the edge I mean they're all equivalent to what a spot weld would be because it's touching at least the same surface area contact surface area that a spot weld would have but it'd be nice to just get improved on, on them swirly plugs that I do which I will do and I appreciate everyone who's a welder time served or just a hobby welder giving me their advice I'm not um, ignoring what you've said and um, Whilst, you know, I'm always curious as to how I can improve, I am listening and appreciate it. And sometimes you may worry that it's coming across as a criticism. I don't see it as a criticism. You know, I, I take it all on board. And if you're going to be brave enough to put YouTube's on videos on YouTube, you've got to be able to allow, allow to accept uh, critique. Otherwise, you shouldn't be doing it. So I have to have broad shoulders and accept the critique. The only thing that we don't accept is abuse. We just delete that because that's just for odd people or you know I wish I could help them people but I don't think they'll let you to so let's move with a spot welder we've had enough talking it's down to action again PC Cortina City continuing on and then we're going to move to the exciting inner sill be good when we start getting some strength back along that run there okay hope you're having a good time watching so far join me let's keep going Okay, my favourite bit. I just love this bit. Everyone's going to think I'm spot well crazy. Well, I am spot well crazy. I don't know why it's so satisfying. And I look like the guy out of the, the guy out of the damned. I mean, where's me at? Because I want spot. Don't want to burn me air. Well, the hat took a hit. I have to get in touch with Teng. Boom! Boom! Okay. Leave these till the inner sills on because that'll take a few spots as well. They've gone in nice and, and left a good imprint, so that just, that just helps with that. Can't get them up here, I'm afraid we can't get in the top piece. But so that's that bit's finished. Inner sills next, so obviously, we've dressed that up nicely, so we want to be looking at the inner sill, and we've also got some floor mounting seatbelt mounting bolts to sort out um as you saw with the floor 
it doesn't come with fixtures and fittings or furniture or whatever you want to call it bolts, brackets, seat belt, mounting points you have to fit those so we need to go and get the old floor pan salvage those off by drilling the spot welds off the plates and then get some very good measurements we might have to get uh, a heated heated? Ooh. we might have to get a floor frame off one of the seats and mock it up and make sure because we don't want to get that wrong we've got to make sure that uh, when you come to assemble your seat and bolt it into the car that you fit it not only fit the captive nuts but got them in the right spacing wouldn't be anything worse than that you'd be stuck I mean, you suppose you could alter your, your bracket but you don't want to be doing that you want to be getting it right we also have to drill a few more 38 mil holes into the floor pan uh, for the floor bungs and also we need to route out the oval shapes in the chassis run for the plastic caps to fit in so a little bit of prepping work little detailing bits just to finish off and some weld to grind back some plugs to grind back the holes where we use the tech screws to hold the floor pan in when you remove those you're left with a hole got to plug weld up grind the top off and then we can start thinking about the outer sill we need to do a repair on the B pillar bottom because that's rotted so we need to shape a piece of metal and get that grafted into the bottom of the, the B pillar I'm looking at it as I'm talking to you, I can just see it there because until that's done you can't put the inner sill on because the inner sill gives us when it's out, gives us access under the B pillar easier you could do with the inner sill on but you can move around and look underneath the B pillar and repair the ski jump a little bit better with the inner sill out of the way so I think what I'm going to do now that I'm happy with this area those spots are in nice dimples on there just gives it a little extra feel I'm going to go and look at that B pillar repair I'll take you across let's see what we're up against and we won't forget that we've got to do the seat belt brackets and mounting bolts as well let's go over there and have a look what we got Right, so not so bad B pillar, but in need of help, you can see. Remove a little piece of the rear wing, cut there, take that spot weld out and that one, take that little piece away and see how far we've got to come down. So we need to come down with a lip shape, where there's a, you could probably get a straight piece in there and you could probably save that edge rib get a straight piece in there so that's a little bit tricky in terms of its shape but to be fair I didn't even think I'd be up this end that quick um, I couldn't think I'd be getting this far this quick also when we do close the inner sill in we need to remember to seam seal the jacking point it's vulnerable to condensation inside the sill so we want to be sealing that up also just to give it extra protection seam seal on that We'll be zinc priming the paint, uh, the inner sill. We've got plenty of different, we've got a variety of paints to pick. I shall do some research and see which one's the most appropriate rust proofing paint to put on the inside of here. And bearing in mind it's going to be blitz with dinner troll as well. Um, not about much dinner troll in there, you could have bare metal, but we ain't going to have bare metal, of course. So, my first job is. I've got to make the choice whether to start on this or to do those mounting bolts. I'm probably going to pick this because it's part of this run here and it's just going to make it it's going to make it more uniform that we've got this side cracked. If you see what I mean, then bolts can be done any time. I'd rather get the jobs that are questionable out of my head. Those ones don't worry me. I know how I'm going to do it. This, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to tackle it. So I'd like to do those kind of jobs first and it stops me questioning. Leave this with me, I'll have a think. Okay, I was left to think for a while and think I did. And I was looking at what I could do to repair this B pillar bottom. And I was thinking, well, you could plate that and everything's dead easy apart from that nice rolled curved edge. So I had a look around and guess what has the same shape? Oh yeah, the piece that we cut out of there happens to be exactly the same curve and fold over as this side. 
Uh, okay, but you have to take it off a different section. It's sort of inverted, if you will. You'd know what I mean if you tried it. But So, there's enough of it. So I've joined another piece of metal, just tacked it for now. Put a fold in it, and then another fold there to follow that. So that slots into there. This just needs cutting out and then letting in. Then we've left it overcut here, because this has a drop-down lip. So I'm going to slice the nose off that, the old lip off, and then we're going to put a piece of metal underneath spot welded to it, which will fold up at the end, and that will make the, the laying um, relief. Although I'm not quite sure what it's for, but it just drops down, comes down, and it's just like a flat area. It's probably the spot welding flat face of that, from that pressing. So we want to replicate that idea, so we just put a lip in it, underneath the metal and spot weld the lip in and then we've got something then should be good so I think we've got away with that we just need to trim the bottom of this follows roughly the dime the wet the depth of that one because that overlaps the sill now you're just gonna have them half crescents showing a little bit more here so it won't actually be complete but we could use that as the plug weld to the sill because we'd have to drill it to plug it to the sill anyway so we'll be able to use those existing ones they're the old drill off mark so the main thing is to get a good cut and then blend that in do that nose relief section there and I bet you you'll not even know that's gone in here's not as critical to get it because the inner wing lands on it as long as we get that profile right we've got the old piece of, it, of quarter wing there's not much left gone at the bottom but I'm sure that won't be a big deal that's covered by the wing the main thing is you get a nice um, v-shape there which you'd only just see at the back of the lip of the wing oops there goes the job he's connecting to the magnets again weld cut out weld then trim to the, the spec that you need we're gonna have to measure it but this will be over size we could leave that until we get the wing fitted and cut exactly how we need it the main thing is to get this shape now it does pull in a little bit uh, it comes in and the shape of the bottom of these just slightly kicks in a bit so we might have to just put a little kick in shape on it what i can do is i can fit the sill and then we can shape this to suit as we keep trying the sill if it fails I have found the Portuguese to the rescue again has got these in better shape although they're even they're rotten but we could always slice that out of the Portuguese and graft in if we had to but this is a solution I'm going to leave it for tonight it's tea time a day another day for tomorrow I'm tired get an egg and beat it beat it right now then I've just time walked you you left us, I left you trying to fix this. So we've got a piece of the front A pillar, grafted it into the B pillar, put a lip on it here, so it sits on the sill and it's worked. Extra bit at the bottom, nice and straight. So that gives us the repair for the B pillar and it fits. I was quite pleased. This bit's wrong. You can see where the wing comes down. I'm kicking out too much there, but that can be just rebent, trimmed, and just reshaped, just so it follows up. There's, at least there's more metal, not less metal. So I've got that bit wrong. But when the wing's off, we can fix that. The main bit was getting this right and making sure the sill is sitting in the tub at the same place. Torch coming on for you now. Hold on same place you can just see the torch is going to overexpose it hang on you'll be able to see there's a line on the tub where the sill used to rest against let's see if the light will do it it should do you can just see that faint rust line indicating the top of the sill where it touched the tub so the sills in exactly the same place it should follow these original yellow lines that we marked see how it's just kissing underneath that yellow line so we know that the sill's resting right and that means that this shape here is okay 
you'll see can you see that little ridge just where that metal goes out again we'll have to correct that with the metal filler we could braze in fill it if you wouldn't really want you could easily that's the kind of shape that would lend itself to quite an easy braze in fill because it's a shallow hollow and this shape won't warp so we could do that or you could skim it in there's no way you can get or you could lead it actually leading would be best that is best leaded the pros can lead go up this end I might learn leading actually Thinking about it all the time. I've got a kit. I've got the kit. Janie sent already up that end. I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm hoping that that's the right shape. I mean, I can't see why not because it comes from that width there, then tapers in to meet the sill there. So it looks right. Can't see a problem with it. I don't think it's going to be a problem with that. So really, we're ready to fit the inner sill making notes of some dimensions as well because we've got that middle cross member we've got plenty of nice reference points and using the old floor pan over there this is why it's good to keep your bits we're able to get our numbers for our seat bolt mounts so I've been taking measurements to make sure we put them in but the best thing to do with the seat belts is also actually physically fit the runners as well as going off these dimensions a bit of Bit of a mixture to do the, uh, the seat belt anchor bolts into the floor pan but we're going to do the inner sill first so that means prepping the inner sill now with the appropriate primers there it is the inner sill shining underneath we'll put some boards down over there move that floor pan place the inner sill onto the boards and then we'll get it the uh, the areas that we need prepping so it's just going to be all the edges, the contact faces, certainly for the inner, because the sill, uh, we can do the outer bits with the sill removed, you can get access to the outer parts for painting. So I'll just do the inner parts and we'll get some welds on, we'll make sure it's correct at the front. So we're getting ready to fit the inner sill as we wanted, on target and on plan, simply because this went okay. It took a few hours just to get it, just as I say, lucky that that profile is exists over here in around that section and that section was cut out and in, intact so it was we were lucky to be able to use it to make this um, I wouldn't like to have tried to make that nice rolled edge it's just a lot easier when it's already put, punched out if you try and make you could build that and then build it with weld and keep profiling it with the the um, crock sander if you wanted you could get there in the end but we used what was around so another piece of bramble stays in the car a little lucky piece over in that corner leave me for a few minutes while I get the inner sill in the prep area on some boards here we go
getting ready to fix the lower edge of the sill, the inner sill. We're going to be fixing anything around the top because the, the outer sill has to slot into these places here. But we can fix along the bottom for now. It gets uh, some spot welds in along there. Obviously we go through it again with the actual sill over with the full sill, the outer sill, then it got the spot weld will go through <coughs> three pieces of metal, but for now we'll get this on. We just check that the floor runs flush with the bottom of this and that we have just up here we measured 88 from that edge of the top of the door down to the top of the sill and it is 88 which leaves the floor slightly higher by 3 mil so you just push down with the palm of your hand on the floor and just flex it in it'll go under a slight tension then into the inner sill itself so the floor slightly bowed when it's been welded and stuff so you just push I'll show you what I mean this one's clamped so it's flush here it starts to bow up the floor so you just push down there's plenty of flex to do it then grip check again you, uh, your measurements what we'll do we'll double check from there to the top again and make sure that's what we measured before we took the old sill off we'll correct at the front lining up with the conduit tube impression there and then the front so we're lining up there across we go to the back jacking point lines up with the jacking point there so we're okay there we're at the end on here which we should be for the wheel tub fixing point so really that's it that's an inner sill going on we'll do a couple more checks before we do it but we're getting ready to put spot welds along the bottom of it and then we're going to prep the inside of it we're going to seam seal the jacking point then we're going to scotch pad the face down and get some rust proofing paints on once we're finished with the rust proofing paint the zinc 182 we'll be using today it's over paintable with our Ford Brown just to give us some detailing inside and of course when the car's done this will be dinner trolled completely with a high pressure lance so let me get the welder out let me get the rest of the stuff ready here we go for inner sill fitments
Okay, the sills are zinc primed, masked over where the weld through is. And now we're going to seam seal around the seatbelt anchor bracket just to stop moisture creeping underneath these. Are well known for having a, a go, a rust having a go on these. Around that one, we'll get the brush on it in a sec, and then I'll just slowly take you around on the jobby on the floor. The jobby camera tripod is there. The jobby sounds rude, doesn't it? Jobby one. Okay, we'll get the brush on that. Love this tube mounted seam seal in the tube. A lot better than out of the tub. On the seam sealer brush now. The one use these seam sealer brushes. You stay with me. I'll keep it rolling. Yeah, the one the one use brushes. Because you can't really, I suppose I, mean, I might try thinners on this, it seems a waste, I hate wasting stuff. I'll try it in thinners, I'm sure I've done that in the past. There really isn't anything to it except to do that. And that's it. Same for this side. Take you over. Just, this is all you do. And that's it, that's Ford. Okay, we're done. Seam sealed. We can put the sills on. Well, we're going to paint the sills now. Say so there's two, there's um, an etch, there's a zinc, there's a weld through, and there's an over weld through, and there's, I think the original Ford paint's taken off, and then the zinc through primer, weld through primer on where the Ford brown was taken off. And now we're going to mask, as you can see, and then we put the our colour coded primer on just so that if you used to look through there it looks nice and clean we'll do that next paint I'm going on next get a mix on no we're okay standard thinners cleans the brushes I don't want to waste them brushes so yep yeah, you can use your standard thinners in one of these water body tubs otherwise it'll melt in any plastic or a glass jar um, you can get these handy tubs from the paint shop give you your mixing ratios we're doing one to three mix on our paint. This is a uh, seam sealer brush just dissolving in the thinners off it, uh, the seam seal off it in thinners. Getting close to doing some painting. Over here's the sill. Door is open because of fumes. Mask will be going on as well. So there's two layers on there, three layers on that. Weld through, a zinc weld through. That zinc weld through as well is on. And now we use Techno Grip, which is also zinc based. So there you go, we'll get that painted. This inner sill spot welding on nicely at the bottom. Got some good welding on that, but don't forget we're going through again with the, the outer sill, but you can see we have some nice runder spots. Uh, drilled out for plug welding because you can't get the spot welder into the A pillar or the B pillar, so drill out and then reprime at the back where the drill burr damages the prime again there. So we're ready to slot the sill into place and then tidy up that area around there. Once the sill's in, we can close the rest of the welds up. We won't do the bottom of the sill just yet till we put the door on, just in case we can rock the sill a little bit. Although I doubt there's much movement we're gonna get in that. I think it's gonna guide itself. I don't think there's much we can do. We'll have a look just in case. So that paint, that Technogrip paint's cured. I put it on quite thick, um, didn't thin it down too much. It's a little bit slow coming out of the gun, but give a good cover. 
so we've got a nice coverage on the sill okay so we're ready obviously the outer sill needs prep and there is probably one more area that needs the weld through that I've missed just somewhere along here where the ski jump lands so we better do that now okay Right, with the sill clipped in, it's time now to do some measuring again. We've got our old sill that we marked up, if you recall. 136.4 sill lip to sill lip. Now it's taken off the inner sill lip. So the tape measure fixes across there where we marked the cross, if you can just see. So that was where, before we even touched the car, we were taking the measurements. And then pulling it across, we get... 136.5 so one mil difference which is fine 136 just just on the five right where my nail is 136.5 so a mil out i'm going to live with that so that's pretty good so tape measure out off and then we go for a couple of checks transmission tunnel aperture it's just to get a, a reading up this end a bit of a guide and then we've got 88 going from the 88 mark up on the roof there. That gives us the aperture opening. I'll check those. I'm sure it's going to be right. Can't do it with one hand, but we're ready to check. Not a lot I can do if it ain't, but it's nice just to know it all went together. Um, everything's clamped up. This repair piece has gone on a treat. And look, we've pre-drilled the holes ready. I had to make them a little bit small, so I had to be quick with a MIG in there. I didn't want to blow that little lovely little repair lip that I've got down the edge here to um, plug and you see that the repair piece comes in lovely with the edge of this sill obviously I told you that I've got modified that up this end then following very neatly and lip to lip parallel across the inner sill with no deviation you can see there it's only because it's not drawn up but even Fords have slight they never follow completely parallel but they're pretty good and butted up to the front as far as it'll go up to this recess line there's a little recess line built into the sill for this to bed onto and that's just butted up against that on these these copy uh, things there's a bit of a, a difference here by a couple of mil on that nose edge but it's covered by the wing and I've seen them vary on car to car so everything is in tolerance as it as it happens it's all in tolerance we're clamped at the bottom and we won't be welding the bottom just yet as discussed about just in case this line is able to move a little bit when the door's on and we can manipulate the uh, slight difference on the lip of the floor so that we can get a perfect gap on the door if indeed that's doable it may be that it just won't allow me to do it there may be nothing in it but it's worth a try definitely worth just fixing along the top you can, we can put the plugs in because I mean there's no you can't alter that it has to go there because then plugs have to draw that up nice and tightly so we have to put them in but the place where you can get away with adjustment is the floor edge because you can get a couple of mil and just move it a little bit and you might be able to just manipulate a little bit into that you can push down on the floor you can move a little bit um, to a degree anyway it will affect the sill at the top but there is just a little bit of movement this inner sill is attached to the floor so if you push the floor you're going to move the inner sill which would make it change here but you might find that see it's slightly high there we can push down perhaps there's, there's little bits all in all though it's completely within specification we may find that the door fits a treat. I need to go and find the hinges. The hardest part about doing the door will be finding the hinge bolts. I've got, I dug the hinges out, but I've got a box of bolts, and you'd think me would have bolts everywhere, but they're at my other lockup. I can't get to them, so I have to try and find bolts knocking around. There should be all the bolts when I strip this car. A spare set. Anyway, I'll find them. I'll find enough to bolt the door on. And just see what happens with it. It's original door. We have got other doors off the Portuguese shell, but we're going to use the original doors for the alignment. Okay, so I'll get some plug welds in, and I'll get some spot weld in along the top. Just see how the spot weld takes. Here we go. Going good for inner and outer sills.
Here's a little tip for you as well for Bart Free Cortinas doing the same job as me, Cortina owners, restorers. If you want to know these sewers, right, like I said, there's that little line, but also see that little recess which is for this A pillar edge of the end of the A pillar to land in between there, which creates that being flush. So you know you've got it when you, you just nicely tucked in there. Just want to let you know that one. Because you might think you're out, but you're not if you're there. Okay. So spot welds are going in along the top. It's starting to be solid now. Got a few more to do, but we're nearly there. And some plugs to do. Right, we're all clamped up at this end, so that's now drawn the pillar in. Because the pillar was on a wobble, or it was just wobbling because it was in fresh air. So now with that clamp on... We're now starting to get the strength back into the shell and we now go for our other measurement 136 inner lip to inner lip and you know it's going to work but because already i've already checked it but i just wanted to share the good news really 136 to 136 you can't see it but it is on 136 to the mill Every measurement that we took, or I took, has come back into a mill. So when I removed this piece from the car and then replaced it with this and the floor pan, everything is back how it was when it came in. Assuming that it was right when it came in, it is now right. So we are in a position where we can plug weld up the top and of course we leave the bottom as I said just in case there's any movement in that sill that we can help correct any potential door gaps but um, I can't wait to see that bit actually I'm so curious about it but <laughs> excuse me I don't think oh my god I need me root beer I don't think that it'll do anything uh, there is a little bit where it raises up there but it can't be it's got to be just the shape of the cut because there's no way you can suddenly just curve that if this was pushed down it's possible but that's up right against it it could be that this little piece here actually brings that down a little too far which pushes that down uh, but I doubt it I mean it's corrected by that point so that you could argue this could dip in I don't think so because that end piece wasn't actually cut it's only a half when you think about it so that's touching so really that's just a shape of the sill i don't know if we went to the other side you'd see similar de uh, deviances i doubt it but i have seen it where you just get a little bit of metal and they're not both flush all the way it's not a big deal that a minor detail you could always just run the um, flap disc over it and take a mill off there and it would be correct but it's, it's hidden with the rubber trim. Really, that does not worry me at all. So then, it's plug weld time, and then it's a clean up time, and then I'll put some of the uh, the alley fill into that. Even though the, the body shop are going to go over everything because the, all these areas will be pointed out to them where they'll cast their magic eye on it. It's more for me to um, see how the finished product is, and body shop may leave it in my my skin might be fine. But it's all up to them. These areas will be pointed out, uh, reference using the video as reference material. The body shop actually watched the films in great detail anyway, because they're fans of the channel, so they're going to know what I've done, which is a great thing about um, doing a video log of your car, because you can just say to the body guys, well, you know, watch that. And that's if, they, if they're into that kind of thing, and they've got indeed got the time to do it. Some people haven't got time for YouTube always uh, maybe just by skipping through perhaps but to get all these details you would have to watch you know the full hour which they do both the body shop guys do watch so that's handy and hello to masters juju and colin hello there so i hope you're uh, hope i'm doing it right juju <laughs> i'm going to make any extra work for you out there okay i'll get plug welding Continuing on, I'm very happy. 
Okay, so paint on, the weld's ground down, filled, plugged, and we're done. So this uh, phase is now complete. It's now time to just pop the door on so we can have a look at the gapping and then attach the bottom of the sill to the floor. And then the sill's complete, then we'll do what we'll do then. I'll run a seam sealer bead on the inside. This isn't getting blasted either here because this is bare metal. There's no point wasting time in the blasters on stuff that's already clean. So that gives us the chance to put the seam sealer down, finish the bulkhead seam, blend in that floor edge. That'll just need lightly skimming in just to fill the craters. A lot of it's quite flush, but there are some bits like we go flush there, you get little bits, so we'll skim them. So we've done all right there. Paint goes on, gives me an idea, and then we can move on to the next phase. Obviously, I've left this end of the sill completely unattached because of the quarter area, so we're not attached in there at all, so we can slot the wheel tub in without it being a problem. Just in case there's any little bits around that area. So we're done, we're done, we're done, we're done. We'll move on, close down for tonight. It's been a long day. Good evening, and I'll see you soon. Signing off for this evening. Hungry and ready for a beer. I've earned my beer today. I'll see you soon. Could be tomorrow, could be in the next episode. I'll count my footage and see where we are. If it is the end, it will be episode. 14 because we skipped 13 and we'll see you then moving fast thanks for the comments and positive constructive feedback check patreon.com forward slash cortina if you want to join and find out more about the car help support the project if not then feel free youtube is there for you over and out My favourite laundrette, classic tumble dryers from the 60s, scrapped, let's go and check it out, they're closing down the laundrette, I can't believe it, pastel blue, pastel pink, pastel cream, laundromat machines, coin operated, old school, years of service, gone, let's go check it out. That's where it was, I just don't make them like that now. Extenders, well. Yeah, I've got cottons in the back, I think. Cottons in the back? Hmm? The line of this one. Any rats in there? No, not yet. I think there's a pair of my old Wrangler jeans still in here somewhere. I never, never found them. Stuff used to get nicked. <laughs> Lost a beach towel, were not you? Really good quality beach towel. I think it was this. I think it was this one. Yeah. Kitted it, have they kitted it out with old machines? Yeah, yeah it is. Wow. Like one more, one more there. Someone's thought of it before me there. But that's in uh, Newcastle City. Now, do the Yorkshire lads go to Newcastle? Why? Believe it's a good night out.
What on earth are you doing? What on earth are you doing? You move your head about a million miles an hour. <laughs> you crackers.